G'day community and welcome to the Jock Reynolds Supercoach Podcast. I am Lek Dog. You've just heard the music from Telebeats, and I'm joined by a very, very special guest, a man who we haven't heard from yet in the Jock Reynolds uh, universe. It's Staddy Matty, Master of the Cheat Sheets. How are you, my dear, dear friend? I'm very good, thanks, Lek. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's been a long time coming, uh, and I'm, uh, like everyone, pretty happy to be here. Oh, mate, we, I was very excited to have you. I was talking to Damo the other day and we realised we hadn't had you on a pod, so I thought I had to get in first before he steals you yeah, fair for, enough. A, for a Q&A pod. You're probably, but, you've started, maybe you've opened the floodgates, Like Maybe this is the start of uh, me being on every single podcast from now on. Oh, mate, if your cheat sheets are anything to go by, I think the fans are going to be very, very <laughs> happy with that. <laughs> So, Staddy, uh, first of all, you're a you're a Crows man. Yes, that's true. And I'm a Blues man. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. there is a bit of a dynamic here. There, there is. It's not a it's not a bad dynamic. Look, I don't hate I hate Carlton the least of all the teams. Let's just say that. So we're a pretty inoffensive team. I yeah. Feel like. Indeed, indeed. You've, you've stolen a few of our good players. You've also taken a lot of our rubbish over the years. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I can't really hate you for that. We do have a good working relationship, now, two clubs. We seem to swap players and picks pretty much every year. It's good. Yeah, that's very true, actually. Yeah. And let's let's talk super coach. How are you going this year? What's the vibe? We don't necessarily need to know your rank and all that, but how, how are you enjoying it? Oh, look, I am I am enjoying it. It's, it's a funny year. I think last year was pretty tough for, for everyone. Um, I'm not doing too badly, but I've made some dumb trades and I had Zach Butters, I had Josh Dunkley, I had uh, Lockie Neal early, uh, and I traded out a primo, which I know I shouldn't do. Um, I've sort of been stung. Oh, I had in Matt Rao early. I brought in Rowan Marshall for a week when he got um, came back from injury. So I've sort of been stuck a bit, but um, I'm slowly pegging it back. Uh, so I, sit, I'm sitting, I think I'm sitting at 15,000-ish, so it's not too bad. No, no, it could be worse. I'm, I'm not that far off you i think i'm fourteen thousand or something uh so yes to all the people that called me out in round two and said i wouldn't be able to hold on to my rank 200 <laughs> you were correct you were correct but we all knew that was going to happen Indeed, yeah <laughs> uh but yeah no I've, I've sort of having a lot of fun this year and having you guys guys like you on the site doing the cheat sheet and doing a lot of the uh the groundwork and the legwork for the for the site makes makes the podcast even more enjoyable and I can um, sort of switch off during the week a little bit. Yeah, indeed. And I think the dynamic is pretty good. I think there's some pretty smart guys who uh, who we work with and uh, a lot of good intel from, um, you know, Foz has been great and Az has been great in terms of the new dynam- new energy, I suppose. And Clarkie's, uh, you know, the young whippersnapper who's always uh, there giving us a bit of banter. So, it's, yeah, it's been very good. No, and it's great to have you on. But people don't want to hear about us. No. We've got to start talking about Supercoach. The first thing I want to touch on with you, Staddy, is look, DJ Will on Twitter, he's a big fan of ours. He listens to all the podcasts and he rightly called me out. He said, we don't, we spend a lot of time on bargains and rookies. We don't spend enough time talking about the absolute guns, specifically the Bont and Jack McRae. And how, how good are these two people at football? It's, it's incredible, isn't it? First off, is DJ Will a uh, dog supporter? Is that why I, he wants to do I, those two? I'm, I have a gut feel that he's probably a, do- a dog <laughs> supporter. He said he loves Bont as much as I love Daniel Rich. So, yeah, fair enough. I mean, there's a chance he's not because I'm not oh, a yeah. Lions yeah. supporter. Exactly, exactly. Look, do you know what I find interesting is that you've got Bont and you've got McRae, but you've also got Dunkley. You've got three guys who are possibly the top three scorers in the game in one team, um, which is astounding. You know, maybe it's just the one-twos they give each other. I'm not sure. Uh, or it's maybe just the, the fact they're there when in the in the crux in the crux when it happens, so they get more of the the um, scaling based on effective disposals. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's pretty incredible those guys, Bonds especially. Yeah, and you look at them their their impact for Supercoach. They go, McRae goes at one point four points per minute. Bond goes at one point five. I'm looking at the top ten. There's only two other players that do that, Jack Steele and Zach Merritt. So they're just, when they're on, and they're just constantly being involved, constantly producing points for us. You look at Bond, he's just hit over 700K as well. Yeah. So if you picked him at the start of the year, I thought he was a little overpriced at whatever price he started at, 615 or yeah, something, something, like, something that. like that. He's made 85K. <laughs> yeah, he's over 700,000. He's averaging 130. It's That's insane. Incredible. 
Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, 100, 129.8 is his average. That's incredible for a, for a midfielder. Adam Trelaw was supposed to come and steal some of these points. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jack McRae, you know, his price is virtually unchanged as well. He's lost seven grand for the year. Yeah. And I think... I think we'll go through the the top ten or so. Maybe maybe we'll go top fifteen. Whatever we get to, scorers in SuperCoach so far this year. And I think there's a couple of names that stand out to me that like have kind of held their price all year. Mm. And if you can pick these guys, I think it sets you up for big success. And I mean, I did it with McRae uh, and Oliver, but we'll go through the list. And there's a few guys that have just maintained value. They're still kind of pods. Yep. And then you look at guys like Max Gorn, who's still top three, but has lost 130 grand. So let's go through the yeah. list. Sure, gonna be off. We got Mc, uh, Bont leading all comers, averaging 129.8, had another 156 on the weekend. He's huge. Second is Jack McRae, uh, who's averaging 126.5. I think we probably would have thought he'd be the number one or number two scorer this year. So that's not a surprise. And that's why you paid 650 grand for him at the start of the year. Then Max Gorn, who this is an interesting one because You've arguably overpaid Staddy on on a guy, but he's still the third highest scorer for the year. So he's lost 128,000 and he's averaging 124.8. But arguably the smart play would have been to not start him. Yeah, yeah. Look, I was thinking about Max Gorn, uh, Lick, and, you know, he's 29 years old. He's uh, you know, nearly 150 games. Um, there's, I was thinking about him from next year, actually, because I think my season possibly could be over. Um but, you know, do you start Max Gorn next year? And I reckon you've hit the nail on the head that if his price is under 700K, uh, I think you start him. Absolutely. I think if he's 700K, he's probably averaging 130 to 135 points. Um, and that's realistically what he's going to get. If he's priced 720, 730, maybe you wait. I think it probably drops down to 650. Uh, and you can pick him up, you know, maybe round 10 or something just when you want him uh, at, a, at a deflated price. Yeah, and there's, there's, you know, potentially Jackson, Luke Jackson keeps improving and maybe mm. that makes Max Gorn's role a little more redundant. Maybe we see his average dip closer to 115, 120, and then I, it, it's hard to, like, obviously we're speculating and obviously he is still the third highest scorer so far this year, so it's hard to talk mm. talk him down. But uh, there's, there's going to be interesting. The ruck line might be interesting next year. Would you find possibly if that happens, like that Jackson comes in, Gorn actually moves to a forward more and maybe gets dual position? Oh, mate, That'd that's, dream, that's the <laughs> I believe he was a forward at one during one year earlier in his career, and um, geez, I'd give to give to have that back. <laughs> As we keep moving down the list, Staddy Clayton Oliver fourth overall. I don't think that surprises anyone. His price has dropped by about twenty seven k for the year, averaging one hundred and twenty two. I mean, no real surprises there for no. me. How have you seen his year? He's been fantastic. I um. I did a bit of a dodgy a uh, couple of weeks ago and had Oliver all season and I traded him out to get Bond in uh, during the Melbourne buy. Um, I think Tim Mitchell talked about doing that and I thought, yeah. oh, look, I really just want to try and maintain uh, a league ranking within my my work, my work league. So, um, and but other than that, you know, Oliver's a, a perfect uh, primo that you keep all season and he goes up and down a little bit, but you know he's always going to perform. Yeah, well, I mean, if you did make that trade, presuming it was in that final buy round, you've already made yourself 200 points by bringing in uh, Marcus Bontempelli. So yeah. it, it, I thought it was crazy because I'm someone who doesn't have a lot of trades, but it, <laughs> it just goes to show, like, there are circumstances where you can break rule one. You can yeah. trade your premiums. It was a, technically it was an upgrade. It's just a very, very small one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number five, one bloke that still is flying so seemingly under the radar. He's in 10% of teams now or a bit under. But Jared Lyons, he's averaging 121.1 and he's doing it in a manner where some of these other guns go 150, 100, 150, 80, that sort of thing to get their average. But this bloke just pumps out 120 120s, pluses. 30s, he exactly. just, he's an absolute jet. He's maintained, he's effectively maintained his price. He's... $19,000 more. But I just, if I could go back and tell myself something, it'd be pick Jared Lyons. See, if I could go back and tell myself something, it would be don't let the Crows trade him to uh, to Gold Coast. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> I forgot he was a, a Crows player. I was looking into this today and uh, we, we traded him for basically pick 43, I think it worked out to be. Um, 
Yeah. Anyway, it's a hard one. It's it a hard one. But yeah, his, his, like... price, his price has barely fluctuated. I think 17K is the biggest move he's had all season. So, yeah, he's a super consistent uh, uber premium who uh, would be – I can't believe he's still only in 10% of teams. I think yeah, I've had he... him in the cheat sheet maybe three or four times and uh, <laughs> he's still there. It's just – it's one of those ones where – maybe the issue is he's never deviated in price, so you've never seen him as a value option. That's a good point. Um, the only people who've been getting him would have been people going full upgrade, like my smarter, better half, Cassie, who mm. has him <laughs> in her team. Yeah, very good. Jack Steele coming in at six. I think we'll just do the top ten here. Jack Steele coming in at six. Uh, price at 640 grand, averaging 119.5. He's on fire. Five round average of 130. And another guy that's actually still cheaper than he was at the start of the year, averaging 1.4 points. He did drop minute. down to 580k uh, around round eight, Lek, 569k actually, around nine. Um, but yeah, he's come back to where he was. Yeah, he was firmly in my sights as a. When he, when he did dip in price, I thought, right, I'm going to be able to get him at the buy and. Upgrade him to him pretty easily. And then, uh, no, I was wrong. He kept scoring well and I couldn't afford him anymore. Indeed, indeed. No, he's, a, he's an absolute gun, Jack Steele. This next bloke, number seven, uh, there's not one person out there that picked this. Darcy, <laughs> Darcy Parrish is priced at $676,000. He's gone up $210,000. He's averaging 118 for the year, five round average of 138. Exp- explain it to me, Staddy. And how did we miss this? Look, I think, I think you've got merit. You've got Heppel. I know Heppel's maybe a, a more mature uh, supercoach player, but you know you probably didn't look. At, we used to have Dylan Shield, I suppose, at the start of the season. Um, people probably didn't see Darcy Parrish. He hadn't had a great couple of years previously, or hadn't maybe boomed as much as we thought he was going to. Uh, and he was probably priced what we thought he was going to when he was around that sort of four fifty mark at the start of the season. So, yeah, no one picked it. But uh, good on him for uh, doing what he's done. He actually started in 1% of teams, scored 99 in round one, scored 52 in round two, got traded out by 10% of his owners. And then since then, has had like two scores below 100 and the rest are like 130 plus. It's just, you can't. You got to back yourself on some of these players. I just seem to always get the wrong ones. Yeah, averaging 134 since round six. Oh, that's insane. <laughs> so, including a 160. I was looking at this now. Including a 166 uh, and a one, uh, 162 as well. Poor. It's a huge upside. Two scores of 160 plus. It's yeah. it's cra- like I don't know what the, what he looks like next year when we're picking our teams, but he's going to be tempting a lot of players. Will he be too pr- high priced though? Will he be, see, he's sitting 650 to start the season? Oh, like? He's going to be one of the highest priced players in the in the game. Mm. We'll be thereabouts. Or depending on what happens in the second half of the season. Yes, yes. I'm assuming he continues to average 140. (laughs) Number eight in the top 10, Jack Zeeble, a bloke that uh, everyone who listens to the podcast know I did not start because I wanted to start Dane Zorko instead. Uh, Good and bad. Averaging 113 for the year has increased his price by $280,000. Um, since Hall and McDonald have been, well, since McDonald's come back in, his score has dipped a little, but he's still averaging 104 over the last five games. But, Staddy, is this a bloke that you started in your forward? I run? did actually start him because he was so cheap. Uh, I actually started him and Impey, uh, and they were both fantastic. Impey's been traded out, since been traded out, but Zebel is still sitting firmly, I think. Uh, he might be my uh, F4 or 5, I think. So, yeah, yeah. he's been fantastic. I think, I think it's a good lesson for me for next year and years moving forward. Is Impy? I I tossed up Impy and Zebel versus a single premium, mm. and I was looking at them as injury risks rather than looking at the upside of what they could provide um, and what they have proven they they could provide. Because I was worried about injuries. Ironically, I had a thousand other injuries to deal mm-hmm. with, but it's just. I, I, and I can't think of any examples off the top of my head of blokes who are going to come into next year super underpriced with some scoring premium. But it's in the, 
you know, in hindsight, it's it's as clear as day that these should have been players we selected. Siebel was a role change for me. You know, he was a midfielder who was banged up every single year, moving, technically listed as a forward, but moving into the back line. And we all said, or a lot of people said, he's going to take kick-ins, he's going to play on from those kick-ins, he's going to be a, a, a you know, to use an American, Americanism, he was going to be the quarterback of the back line. Um, and for me, that was the thing that sold it. Uh, it wasn't the fact that I, it, was, it was the role change that really sold it to me. Yeah, and we, we can say the same thing about Dyson Heppel, who's effectively done the same thing this year. They've, you know, he's playing behind the ball. He came in under price because of injury history, and they've taken him out of that that role where he's required to really, you know, put, put his, his body, body on the line, line as much. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, the Blues did it with Bryce Gibbs, and Adelaide did it with Bryce Gibbs. and <laughs> Not very well. Not as well as you guys did. <laughs> no. All right, we move into nine of the, number nine of the top ten, and it's Nick Nat New at six twenty k. I'm going to say that I did actually call this one preseason in our West Coast pod. I said that he was a player that would. Um, I think I called him a bolter. Yep. So I'm, I'm happy to claim that. Uh, and we were worried about his game time impacting his his ceiling, but he's shown this year averaging 113. Per game, uh, and his his price is effectively maintained the same six twenty k at the moment. Yeah, a couple of lower scores of ninety three, ninety four leg, uh, but other than that, nitnack has been um, pulling out one hundred and twenty, one hundred and sixty three in round eleven, uh, and one hundred and six last round. Yeah, another guy that we probably I was pr- probably worried about body wise and injury wise. We know he's missed a lot of time and a lot of games in the past, so. Maybe maybe injury uh, past injury is too much of a factor in some decision making rather than uh, like you know recent injury preseason injuries. Hmm. Possibly, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's move on to number ten, and this is the other guy in the top ten, averaging one point five points per game, and that's Zach Merritt, one forty seven on the weekend. I think he was a pretty popular selection at the start of the year. About twenty percent of teams started with him, if I'm correct. He's currently in. Still only in 27% of teams, which feels pretty low for a guy averaging 112.6 for the year. Doesn't it? Yeah, look, Zach Merritt, I'm just trying to recall. I I think I was a big Zach Merritt fan over the last previous two years. Uh, And he copped a couple of injuries and um, I just wasn't quite certain. Uh, But, yeah, he's come back this year and absolutely dominated for for the Dons. Yeah, and he's he's signed that six year extension, and and he's still pumped out a one forty seven, which is slightly <laughs> better than Cripps's sixty that he pumped out after his six year extension. But uh, it's good to see that he's he's sort of performing well. And we won't go into detail on on the next few, but there's names in there. We got Walsh, Mills, Laird, Mill, Took Miller. Took yeah. Miller's probably a surprise in the top fifteen. Yeah, indeed. Look, I suppose. Um, oh, look, you know. Miller's, again, been sort of getting close to the mark the last few years, uh, slowly getting up there. And I think a lot of people were talking about him at the start of the season as a, as a bolter. Uh, I think he's just proven them right. Yeah, averaging 118. He would be high if he didn't miss that one game with suspension as well. And then rounding out the top 20, we got Tom Mitchell. No surprises there. Ollie Wines, he just keeps improving. He does, yeah. He, someone who's been a bit, bit uh, malaligned from some of his off-field uh, endeavours, uh, losing captaincy. I think he sort of stepped back into that role. He's got a bit more serious. And, um, again, I expect him to, to boom through the last you know, few weeks with uh, Port trying to get back into the top four. So um, he's definitely their, uh, their driver, I think. Yeah, he's, a, he's an absolute jet. Josh Kelly, who, when he's fit, we know how good he can be. This next one, though, number 18 out of the top 20, David Mundy is yeah. the 18th highest scorer. He's dropped off a bit. Three-round average is 96, five-round average is 94. But <laughs> who, who started David, David Mundy? Yeah, I'm just trying to look. How, Mundy must have had an amazing... I'm not even aware of how well Mundy's going, but he must... To be where he is in that list, he must have... He had an amazing early season. I'm just looking at it now. You know, 134 against GWS, 145 against Adelaide, 145 against North. Um He's slowed down a little bit since the buys or around the buys. Um, so I'm not really sure if you'd want to bring him in now. He's sort of maybe on a downward trend, but his, his start of the season was fantastic if you had him. Yeah, and he was in 0.1% of teams. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was the only bloke who picked himself. 
I'll say it speaks to this. This is one of the strategies I try to employ is look at players for total points. Josh Kennedy from West Coast was one of those in the forward line that always finished pretty highly for total points. Uh, This is going back a few years where sometimes you just get these players that end up in the top 20 for total points. You're not really sure how. They haven't had an amazing year, but if you picked them, you're laughing. they They play every game and they might not average you know 120 but they would average 120 on 20 games instead they average uh, 95 on 23 games yeah uh, 24 and, it's, games. and it's really important uh to to succeeding in super coaches you know the, your best ability is your availability as they yeah, say sure. yeah look i know we've talked about it privately you know about how the top point scorers aren't necessarily lauded as they should be uh, I think I've seen a few, I saw an article, I reckon it was maybe a week or two ago, the perfect team that if you had chosen this 30 from the start of the season and hadn't made a single trade, you'd still be on top of the game. You'd be ranked number one super coach. Yeah, um, and I think it wasn't even make, didn't make a trade. It was like didn't make a substitution or a captaincy <laughs> change. <laughs> like, oh, I know. And I know we can be, do these theoreticals every single time, but um, yeah, it just goes to show you are right. If you can pick a player who's going to play every game and be almost uber premium, they're a much better purchase than someone who's going to miss a few games here and there. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And we'll round out the top 20 with Jake Lloyd at number 19 for total scoring, averaging 105.9, lost 112 grand this year. And I, I'd say largely that... There's been an air of disappointment with what he's delivered, but he's 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 still a top twenty overall scorer here at round fifteen or whatever round we're in. Yeah, he did, and and definitely a top six defender. So oh uh, yeah, for sure, you'd, you'd, you'd lock him in every single day of the week. Yeah, still, I still, I reckon I haven't had him in my team for the last three years, and I reckon that might be reflective of, uh, <laughs> of how we're going. And do you know what's going to happen, Lek? Is you'll put him in next year at the start and he'll just die. He'll get in. Oh, touch and touch, touch wood. He'll have a bad season uh, and you'll sort of wish, oh, yeah, I was right. I'm vindicated. Yeah, yeah. vindication. And uh, finally rounding out the top 20 is Dane Zorko. That's not a surprise to me, but I think it's a surprise to some. The, the interesting thing is he's actually only played 13 games. Most of these other guys have played 14, so averaging 113.7. For the year, the number one forward, if I'm not... Yeah, he's the number one no, oh, no, he's behind Siebel. Jack Siebel. Yep. The number two forward. Yeah. And it's interesting you say he's only played 13 games. If you go down to number 21, like it's Brody Grundy, who's only played 12 games. Oh, he's a beast. I can't, he's yeah. a beast, yeah. There, there was question marks over whether people were going to start him before the year started, which I don't understand. He, he's, we, you know, you can make some good arguments about Gorn next year. I don't think you can make those arguments about Grundy next year. No, I don't think you can either. I think Grundy, you're locking Grundy first. Uh, maybe you play good. Again, does it depend on price? Does it? Is it sub 700 ruck when you lock in? Yeah, um, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, we can address that next year. I'm sure we'll have plenty <laughs> of content. <laughs> For now, let's look at round 15. It is round 15, correct? Correct, yeah. It is. Fantastic. No, 16. The, 16. The year is flying. Oh, I'm lost. Yeah, I think it's 16. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's round 16. <laughs> the year is... Uh, that means there's not that much football left, and I feel like the season just started. Yeah, it does. It does feel a bit like that. Um, who, uh, I'm not really sure what's going on with COVID at the moment, Lek. We might not have any more football this season the way it's wow. going today. That's... that's uh, Yeah, let's uh, touch wood. And shout out to our listeners if you're in <laughs> lockdown um, or, or, you know, stay at home or whatever they're calling it in other states. We hope you're listening and and we love you. All right, let's move forward to this round. We've had a couple of injuries. Staddy, we probably don't need to spend a lot of time on these. Bolter and Vlasten went down for Richmond, so it probably helps the job security. It's probably indirectly helps the job security of like Riley Collier Dawkins and, and those sort of guys. Yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? And we've seen that they've they've announced uh I need to find his name is Baker? Barker? Baker? Barker? He's going to uh, debut I for I did see that, yeah. I Richmond. can't remember the name, but I, I saw there was another one. Was it Ben Miller as well? Oh, yeah, maybe it was Miller. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right, it was. So there you go. That's how informed we are on the Richmond uh, extensive list that they have <laughs> down there at Richmond. <laughs> they seem to have blooded a lot of rookies this year. It's you know. very it's very interesting. And I, uh, just from a management point of view, because I, I, I really – 
they still think they're going to play finals and they probably still think they're the, the favourites for the flags, but they've still been able to debut like seven players. Indeed, yeah. Carlton's debuted one player this year. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I think though Carlton's always had a, a big raft of players who've just been in and out, sort of almost yeah. um, like Liam Stocker, who, who's been just, he's played a few games here or there, hasn't really debuted, but he's got a bit of a run this season. Uh, yeah. So, well, technically you've only debuted one. You've sort of blooded a, put, put a bit more game time into a few others. Yes, true, true. As we continue through the injuries, Bo McCreary, uh, if you had him on field and you were still holding him, he scored zero and then was subbed out. So, And that was a concussion sub as well, wasn't it? Uh, yes, mate. I th- actually, I thought it was a calf. I thought he did a calf. I can't remember. He's had some injury issues before. You're probably right and I'm probably No, I'm actually, wrong. I'm looking at Denver. It's Denver uh, Granger. Yes, another bloke that was subbed out very early in the game. He, he did have a concussion. That's correct. Yeah, that's right. So if you've got if you went early on DGB, uh, probably a bad call. And if you had Bo McCreary, his price is going to drop. That zero is going to stick in his rolling average for a while, and he's probably going to miss some games. So he'd be a trade for me. Yeah, and it, and look, even you wouldn't even think of him as a downgrade target, you know, as the fact that by the time he gets back into the team and puts in a few more performances, you know, you're not really looking for targets by then. No, Chad Wingard, he's. He missed, uh, got subbed out with some hammy sauna, so we'll see how that affects the lineup at Hawthorne. I think it's probably good news for guys like Bramble, Newcomb, those sort of players that we're looking at. Yep. And uh, and I see there's a note here, Stady. Are we worried about Neil's shoulder? And look, I'd pro- I'm hearing that uh, we shouldn't be. Uh, that it's something that he can he can manage for the rest of the season. It'll probably have surgery. Uh, it depends if you. I'm, I'm not sure if. Neil is really that super much relevant right now anyway. You know, I think he's number 40 uh, on averages, top 40. Uh, so he could improve or you could just try and target someone in the top 20. So it might not be an issue. Yeah, I don't love uh, – I sort of said this on the podcast last week. I, I'm, I don't think the real Neil has stood up. It's, you know, he had 98 on the weekend backing up a 156. We've seen two scores of – north of 150, which we're against North and Essendon. So we know he can still pump out scores. But I think these 98s, 84s, 85s, I think that's where he is at this year just because of his body and the fact that he's got, you know, he's carrying a shoulder of some degree. Yeah, I agree. I, I wouldn't be rushing out of my way to trade him in. No, there's so many other options at that price that you can, or even lower prices that I think are, are much better. Yeah, agreed. All right, let's look at some rookies, Staddy. Sure, Lek. Um, yeah, so we've highlighted a few uh, rookies' legs. First off, Brandon Walker, um, Fremantle defender. He's uh, 117K, uh, pumped out 50, then had to buy in the 36. Uh, so he's probably got, he's got a break even of about nine to under negative 19. So possibly going to make about 26, 27,000 next round. Yeah, I think um, I think Damo will know all about him. I think he's pretty hyped that he's playing. But I think similar to last week, we put, sort of put an asterisk on these rookies. We said, I'm, I, well, I said, I won't project my feelings onto everyone at home. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like you're trading in these guys, assuming that at some point soon they're going to be a zero on your bench. Sure. So let's try and get some value while we can. So oh, Yeah, okay. If we look at uh, the next guy, who's going to be fifteen grand cheaper, and he is a mid, but Lockie Bramble break even is negative thirty nine. Plays for the Hawks. He's a midfielder, projected to go up thirty nine k. Costs you fifteen k less. So already, if they hit their projected scores, you're fifty k ahead by picking Bramble over a Walker. And a lot of people, I think, have gone early on Bramble. Uh, he was one of the few rookies who was playing in round fourteen, uh, and so. I'm just trying to check what his uh, ownership is. But, uh, yeah, a lot of people have got him already, I think, Lick. Yes, they do. I'm one of them. I, uh, I might have had him before he even played his first game. So <laughs> I, I did do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Gee whiz, he's in 11% of teams. He, the, the community must have gone nuts during that buy around. Yeah, indeed. I'm down to 54 and a 45. Yeah, and that's not awful for a rookie. You know, a good sort of 50, 60 score is what you want. That's all you really expect. And... Yeah, that's what he's provided. Yeah, no, absolutely. The only other guy on the bubble that's completely rookie priced is Riley Garcia. Actually, he's is he on the bubble? Yeah, he is because yeah, he and- debuted and then got subbed. 
So his break even is 30. He's a midfielder, 123K. He's actually projected to lose cash this round. Steady. Can we yeah. even consider someone that's projected to lose cash? Uh, look, he's projected to lose cash based on his average of thirty six. I think I think he's got a forecasted score of twenty two. Actually, uh, yeah. so do you think he's get twenty two? Do you think he might get a fifty? He, Who knows? Yeah, he could he could pump out a thirty or a forty. He's I think probably not a, cho- a player you choose anyway. At one twenty three, like you said, you've got uh, you've got Bramble as another option if you don't have him. Um, I think there's also uh, there's a few guys who are sort of first gamers who you might consider. Yeah. Um, there's guys like uh, Leo Connolly debuted, Dylan Williams debuted for Port. Yep. Neither of them scored. Well, I think Connolly was the sub and came on, so he didn't produce much of a score. Yeah, Connolly got 23. Jeremy Sharp, $141,800, break even negative 19. He came on. And he's only played one game this year, but he scored 74 points for Gold Coast. So there are other options around. I don't think Garcia is one no, that we're looking at. And I've snuck this bloke into the rookie section because <laughs> I know you're, you you probably got the news down there. You might know something about him. But Jared Leonard or Leonard or however you say it, $289,000. So he's not a rookie price player, but he's sub 300K, break even negative 12. He's come in and he's, he's scored scores of 94 and 88. And he's projected to go at 41K. I just think he's an interesting prospect. Yeah. Is it worthwhile spending that much on a player this time of the season, Lick? Like we Well, if let's look at my team. And I have someone called Jack Bowes in my team, $391,000. <laughs> Jack Bowes is scoring far less at the moment than Jared Liner and costs 100, uh, 100 grand more. So if yeah, some of sure. us are considering it, steady. <laughs> I don't know Linet's uh, job security, but I think with losing Lockie Jones, uh, Hamish Hartnett pulled out for Martin Frederick on the weekend, uh, maybe he's got a bit more security than you'd think and maybe he's a good choice. But just from from my perspective, I just wouldn't be spending 300K on a player now, on a gamble now. No, I and, and I agree. I agree. I do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, it's community. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, I think. I think the interesting thing for me is he's a free agent, so I, I don't know if there's some of that in their decision to play him, thinking increasing his value a bit. Maybe we'll we'll wait and see. Yeah, I'm not sure either, to be honest. All right, we're about half an hour in, study, so we're going to take a look at some trade in targets. This is the value section of the pod. We spent. To answer your questions, community, if the guy was in the top 20 we talked about at the start, yes, trade them in. If you're looking for value, this is where our specialty lies. And there's one name who's going to be the most traded in player this 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 week, and it's Patrick Dangerfield. Absolutely. Yeah, I would get him into almost every team I had if I had the opportunity. Uh, with a lack of forward options this, this season, I think even if you can pull out 95, 97 like he has the last two games... Uh, he at 495k leck, Dangerfield is a lock in most teams. Yeah, and he's sort of looming. He he has those moments where you go, oh, he just got 30, 30 super coach points in two minutes. Like he's still doing that in games, which you can see as a negative, saying, well, he hasn't done anything the rest of the games. But we know that Champion Data likes the way he plays. And I expect that the more his legs get under him, the more output we're going to see. But since he's returned, as you said, 66, 95, and 97, and, and that's pretty delicious in the forward line. Break even is 100, so if you if you think he's not going to go huge this week, maybe you can, and you've got other things to address, maybe you can wait till next week to get him in, but I'm looking at getting him in ASAP. Yeah, for me, Lick, that break even 100 just means that he's priced at the bottom he's going to be. Yeah, and that's a good call. And who, who is he playing this week? Essendon, who we talked about, Lockie Neal. Lockie Neal scored 150-plus against, against Essendon. They give up points. And last time he played Essendon, Dangerfield scored 139. That was in round 16 last year. So he likes playing them. Yeah. And where's that being played, Lake, out of interest? Uh, it's, well, who knows? <laughs> it's, I think it's supposed to be down... Uh, yeah, who knows? Sorry, right. Who knows at this stage? Geelong, but who who knows? Yeah, sure. I think it's yeah. I think it's supposed to be Cardinia, but it, it that might be the only safe place to play footy at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't laugh. No, no, we're all sad inside, but it's okay. Next, we've got uh, Isaac Smith as a possible uh, option. Like another Geelong uh, mid forward, um, he's averaging eighty five and got a break even of uh, fifty one. 
uh, and his last two have been 104, 105. Yeah, so I've, I've chucked him in here just to have a look out for some bug and gives you some DPP flexibility. I don't know if I believe in in Isaac Smith's current form, five-round average of 90, uh, three-round average of 99. He's, you know, I think he's p- pumped out scores of 84, 86, 86, 88, 89 this year, a couple of tons and a couple of 70s. I think that 88 range is probably his realistic average. Yeah, if you take out his tons, he's averaging 79. Yeah, so is is that enough? Not the 79, but is let's let's give him 10 points, let's say 89. Is 89 enough for us to to bring him in and do we think he can average that for the rest of the year? Look, I think he can average that for the rest of the year, yes. Um I just wonder is it worthwhile waiting one week trying to milk a rookie for one extra 20, 30, 40 grand and get someone at 480, 490k who you know is going to turn up every week. Yeah, and that, that's a good point. The The main question is, if can you target someone who's going to out, outscore Isaac Smith on the run home after this week and can, you know, Coleman Jones bridge the gap for this week? Who, and yeah. Coleman Jones is averaging 86.5, so that's pretty damn good. Isn't it? Yeah, for a rookie, that's fantastic. All right, your boy, Tex Walker, $423,100 break, even is 108. We're talking forward line options. He had a couple of really, really poor weeks, but he's, he he's been largely very good. Look, he's he, Tex is a, a confidence player. He's up and down. Um, when the Crows are winning, he's winning. When the Crows are losing, he's losing. Uh, I this, this season's been an absolute uh, revelation for me, watching Tex in terms of fast delivery, forward leading, rather than pack marking forward. Um, can he continue at Lek? I think that's the main question. Uh, I... I think he can. I think he seems to sort of come back after a break. You know, you look at the start of the season, he was great. Then he sort of petered off in round seven and eight. He had a week nine off, um, 10 and 11. He came out and did 101, 97, 116. Uh, and now after the bye, he's got 107. So, uh, look, he's a little bit of Isaac Smith in terms of you could probably save a bit more money and get another player who will average more. But I think... Taylor Walker can pull off the hundreds a bit more regularly than Isaac Smith. So I'll probably, if I was to rank them, I'd put Walker before Smith. But in reality, I probably wouldn't bring in either of them. Yeah, I think I agree with that statement. I guess one thing that Tex has going for him is he is the eighth ranked forward this year. So that's, if you're looking to fill your, your six positions and you can find a guy in the top eight, it's pretty good. Can he maintain it is the question. Does he get tired after, you know, let's assume the season runs as normal. Coming off the bye, he plays Brisbane this week. They're pretty tough defensively. Then Essendon, West Coast Bulldogs, Hawthorne, Port, Melbourne, North. Outside of North and Hawthorne, you, you wouldn't say it's a super easy run for you? No, definitely not. There, there is one small thing. It could, If there's a possibility to change the quarter length select, like the AFL have been possibly hinting, is he better at a shorter game? 16, 18-minute quarters might suit him. But, uh, but still, I think Tex early on, excellent. Now you're probably looking to upgrade him to uh, someone who you think can, you know, like I said, a danger field. He's a bit more expensive, but he's got upside, whereas Taylor Walker is basically maxed out, I think. All right. Well, let's copy-paste that conversation. Lance <laughs> Franklin, <laughs> oh. 433000 Now, this is a real Hail Mary, I'm trying to win a league game, I'm trying to beat my opponent, uh, I need a guy who is capable of going 150 plus. Yeah, and and Franklin, for years he's been my um, my my white whale, my nemesis, where my opposition in league games has had him and I haven't, and he's gone and pulled off big 150s. Um, I just worry about his consistency. Key forwards obviously have not always been high on my list of forwards to choose. A little bit more um, mercurial, I suppose. With Franklin as well, I'm a little bit worried about his body. Uh, I just don't see him necessarily playing every game. And we said it right at the start, like if you can get a player who's a little bit uh, lower scoring but plays every game, I think you are in a better off position. So, um, but, you know, I could be wrong, but he's done it before and, um, you know, comes he, you know, he's got a massive ceiling. So this year, what has he done? 130s, 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 three 130s. 
Three one thirties, but he's also matched him with a forty seven, a forty three, and a sixty. And missed four so, games. And missed four games. So yeah. you gotta ask yourself if you look at him, can he play all the games on the run home? I'd probably say no. I don't think he's gonna play every game on the run home. And that alone is probably a, an indicator that you shouldn't be picking yeah, him. I agree. I agree. All right, Staddy, we've talked forward, we talked the years off it. Let's go to the midfield and there is some value to be had here. Absolutely, Lick. Um, first off, we've got uh, your boy, Sam Walsh. Uh, Walsh has definitely stepped up this year. Uh, look, he was fantastic in the previous years, uh, but this year he's, I think, taken it to an even higher level. Um, he's averaging 113, 112.5 at the moment, um, but he's priced at 105. So he's definitely going to uh, provide a fair bit of value there. If you look at his, his scores, uh, 122, 124, 144, couple of 130s, another 124, 131. Look, this guy's got an amazing ceiling uh, at only 545K as well. Uh, I think you want Sam Walsh in your team. Yeah, he's he's playing like an uber premium. He's priced like a just a normal premium, seventh ranked <laughs> midfielder this year. And yeah. for legal reasons, I'm not allowed to select him, but community for those out there, you, you all absolutely should pick this man because he Indeed. is unbelievable. We, Carlton fans taken for granted. He had 38 touches on the weekend. I don't think anyone said anything about it. They were just like, yeah, that's that's what he does. That's his job. That's it. That's it. Yeah, no. Um, Next on that list, I think, is uh, Travis Boakleck. Again, uh, averaging 108, but priced at 99. Uh, He's pulled out some big scores, 160s, 120s, 123, 124 on the weekend. Uh, Priced at 517K. Uh, Another gun, Port Adelaide midfielder. Uh, even though he's getting on in age, he just gets better and better. And uh, he's been in my team since early on, uh, and I recommend him as well. Yeah, I, I started him and he's lost 70K on me, but I, I don't begrudge him because he's 800 years old. But I think <laughs> if you can't quite get to Sam Walsh, this is a, a guy that, as you said, averaging what what's he averaging 108 price to average 99? Yes, that's correct. Oh, that's bloody value. We love value on the podcast. And similar to what we, you said about Ollie Wines before that, you know, they're pushing to win and they need him to play well to win. So, Yeah. Is that a strategy you like, Lek, that you actually choose uh, teams that are pushing to finish well in finals and to get into the top eight as well? So you know, the top 10 teams, I suppose. Yeah, I like teams that are pushing but not necessarily so secure in their position at top of the ladder that they're going to rest their older players. So Travis Boak's in a perfect position where they, they want to finish as high on the ladder as they can. They want him to to win games for them. They're probably just out of the top four now, so they've definitely got to push. Yeah, they've got to push. They're not going to probably rest him. And then you look towards the the last few games for them. Maybe round 22 against Carlton, they, they consider resting him. But against the Western Bulldogs in round 23, they're not resting him. No, yeah, I agree. Um, so next we've got Brayshaw from Fremantle, Andrew Brayshaw. Uh, again, not quite as much value as... Boak, so he's only averaging 102, uh, but again, priced at 99, priced, priced at 517K. Um, Brayshaw's got huge upside. He's had a couple of really bad uh, runs earlier in the season, 66 and 48, um, but he's also had a few big 125s, 132s, uh, and 110 last week. Yeah, this is a guy, well, I'm probably looking at him, if I'm comparing him and Boak to trade into my side, I'm thinking that he has some sort of Walsh-like upside in the back end of the year, Walsh went on to average like 115 or 120 for his last seven or eight games. You're thinking, all right, I reckon Brayshaw can replicate something like that for the run home. And that that's what I, I'm trading him in for upside. I'm trading in Boak for, for security. So it's, yeah, it's really it's up to your community. Point. Great point. What about defence, Lek? Who do you see in defence as uh, the key uh, opportunities for value? Yeah, so the first name I've got here probably isn't super value, but he's just too damn good to ignore, and it's Callum Mills, $556,500. Break-even is 112 Look, I know that he's probably more expensive than the guys we're talking about, but we, we didn't spend much time on him in the top 20 because he just uh, fell outside of that top 10, 10 or so. So we can spend a minute here. He's the top-ranked defender this year. He's first. Yep. He's averaging 111.7. Five round average of 111. His price is this is another one of these guys. His price is effectively what it was at the start of the year. It's only gone up 11k, yeah. and he hasn't dropped below. Uh, well, he hasn't dropped below 101 since round 
since round six. He's at, since round six, he hasn't had a score below 100, actually. No. I'll correct that statement. It is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, he's basically priced at what he should be. His, his break-even is 112. His average is 112. Yeah, he, he's basically you're, – you're buying exactly what you see. You know, there's nothing extra there, but there's probably no downside either. Yeah, and I, I was probably a bit slow to be convinced by him. I wanted to see him in the role. I, I thought maybe he was a little overpriced early in the year, but he's maintained that. He's done what guys like Jared Lyons have done. And he's just continued to provide. So I kind of want to get him into my team if I can. Maybe, maybe I can turn Jack Bowes into him. Because <laughs> he's only in 18.8% of teams. And I've got to get him this year because he's going to be mid only next year. And I'll be too scared to pick him then. Yeah, sure, sure. I think maybe he's stepped up where Lloyd hasn't. I haven't looked at his stats in great detail. But um, you know, we've always had Lloyd as our number one Sydney defender. Uh, I suppose Mills is not really playing a defensive role either, though, is he? No, not not really. He's pretty much pure midfield these days. And I think for years we've heard coaches talk about him and players like him in that ilk, but finally someone's actually done it and I just missed the boat. So, uh, But as we said, we can still bring him in. You know exactly what you're going to get. Yeah, indeed. Next on the list, Maddie, is Lockie Whitfield, another guy that we've spoken about a lot in the past few weeks. Probably don't need to spend heaps of time on him, but $521,900. Break even is 65, so still really low, and scored a 116 on the weekend. And he's just kicked into form since uh, coming back from from injury. Took him a couple of weeks, but it did. Took him three weeks. Yeah, and in the last five, 110, 120, 74, 126, 116. Yeah, look, Lucky Wickfield is the sort of guy who you would um, vice captain very regularly in the last season and seasons before that. Uh, he's a gun player who has a massive ceiling. You know, he's got a, a high score of 200, uh, so you know he can do the big scores. Um, I think he's definitely underpriced at the moment at 521. I think, I reckon for the last, for the, for the run home, for the final sort of eight weeks, I think he can easily be in the top six defenders and priced at 521. I think you've got to get him in now. Yeah, no, not to be too negative on, on the Blues, but if you're playing in a league that plays round 23 grand final, he plays Carlton. If the season goes away, I think it will. The seat, the wheels will be off and we normally get smashed in the final round of the year. And his high score is 170 against the Blues, averages 99.6. So just putting it out there to the world. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, so who's next? We've got Jordan Ridley. Oh, yeah. 470k, so super inexpensive compared to others. He's averaging uh, 101. He had a fantastic start of the season, but he has dropped off. Um, priced at 91, so definitely some value there and break even of 55. Um, he's sort of starting to come back. I think, uh, you know, he, great season. Then I think he got injured in round five, didn't he? Um, yeah, he, he got a, a head knock in round five, missed round six, came back, and they kind of asked him to play a bit taller and he was still a bit unsure but we've seen the last two weeks steady 111 and 111 he's had 19 kicks in each of those games and uh and at least four marks in both of those games yeah no, no i think ridley's a, a great option right now uh again someone who might not at the end of the season look in the top eight overall for defenders but if you looked at his last eight rounds he'll definitely be up there and that's what you need you only need them to be top eight from when you trade him in yeah, exactly. You jump on him now at 470k. When Supercoach opens next year, I reckon by then he'll have pushed his average up and he'll be he'll cost you 550k. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. I agree completely. So get the value now before next year starts. <laughs> and then this bloke, I threw his name in here just as an odd little cheapie because he stood out to me as someone who's having a good year. Dougal Howard, $454,000. Break even is negative 16. Three round average of 118 and a five round average of 99. Bit of an odd one, but he's just uh, someone that seems to be developing his game for for super coaches at home. I, I disagree, Dick. I've got a. I, I would not get in Dougal Howard if I was you. Um, I think his stats are inflated by 160 in round 13. Um, if you look at his, take that 160 out and take out the 126. So obviously, yeah, you're taking out his top two uh, scores. But if you take out those two averages, averages 82. Yeah, that's um, frightening. All right, good call. So Scrap I'm, him. Yeah. I've got another one for you, Lek, because yeah. people are talking about this. Uh, what about Nick Haynes? This is from the left field uh, yeah. as, a, as a defender. So 407K. Look, he, he's he's very, very – his stats don't look great. Um, but And we, we, we're really looking at him as a bit of a risk. 
Um, but I think he's got a fair bit of upside. So 407K, uh, his last three have been 118, 96, and 94. Um, that's post-buy and post-injury. So could be a, an option for someone if you're really cash-strapped and you want to take a risk uh, in defense. You know, th- we, we aren't really strapped in defense. There are some great players to pick, but if you are struggling for cash, he could be your guy. Yeah, averaged 98.4 last year. He was 41st overall, which is pretty good for a, for a value pick. I was really, really close to pulling the trigger on him last week for this year's, okay. this week's Punching Boys, yeah. Jack Bowes, <laughs> and making 50 grand. Instead, I, I held my trades, lost 20 points, and lost 50 grand. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Actually, 100 grand, considering Haynes went up by 40. So, But, yeah, no, I agree. I think... I was really doubtful about people who were looking at him when he returned from injury in round 10 and he scored an 85 and a 51. And I thought, right, I've finally been right about something. But 118, 96 and 94 is, is pretty good. And I think... Yeah. I think that extra week off has helped him as well. You know, maybe just have a couple of rounds, get some average scores in, have a week off. He's resettled. I think uh, he's ready to come back and, and do do well. And look, you don't really care about him making money, um, but he's estimated to go up, you know, in the next sort of five rounds by another 100K. So um, definitely an option if you're, you're short of cash. Yeah, and, and take it with a grain of salt, but Supercoach is projecting averages at least 90 from here on out in against his upcoming opponents. So... If you can, uh, if you think that's good value, I I agree. Indeed, um, I've got a couple of others for you too. If you like, if you've got time, oh, we um, got time. This podcast goes forever, baby. It does indeed. Look, I I love this guy, Hugh Greenwood, um, as a midfielder. Look, five ten k. He's pretty consistent. He's a, an amazing tackler, so he consistently gets his his uh, points from tackles. Um, but he's five hundred and ten k, averaging a hundred. Um, his last three have been 117, 94, 109. He could be a fantastic sort of uh, M8 or M7, depending on what your your team looks like. Um, you know he's there. He rarely gets injured, uh, and he's a consistent scorer. Yeah, one of these guys that loses forward eligibility, people sort of forget about him, but he still has a ceiling. He's posted a 155 and a 142 this year, but as you said, he's a tackling beast. He's had 10 tackles in at least, uh, looks like, seven games this year. So Yeah, he's incredible. That's easy points. That's easy points. Uh, that's it. Really good call. Is, is he enough? At 5'10", it's only a 7K jump to Travis Buck. So these are the questions. He's definitely a pod. He's in 1% of teams. It, I mean, it's just, do you think he has the upside of, of these other guys we've spoken about? Uh, yeah, look... <laughs> Yes, I think I think he does. You know, I think he's uh, look. He's been. If you look at, I know they don't publish it anymore, but the prospectus. He was ranked elite in almost all of his stats. Um, he, he's a gun player. You, you, you're right. Maybe for another seven k, you can get a Travis Boak. Correct. That's probably not a bad bad idea. Or even another five k, you can get yourself a Luke Parker, um, who's probably about the same sort of range as as Bokey there. So, um, look. You're right. It, it's a possible. It's a maybe not the best call, but um, look, I like him. If you if you if you can see an upside in Greenwood, I'd I'd get it. Oh yeah, and if you're into if you're into pods, and he seems to play pretty well when uh, Took Miller's played well, which they, despite both being sort of inside contested beasts, they do uh, they do complement each other. Indeed, yeah. Well, Staddy, because we've been going for 17 hours at this point, and I'm losing my mind. I've lost my hair, and I'm sweating profusely. We're going to go to the Sleeve Watch Award winner of the week. And there was a lot to choose from this week. There was a lot of players donning the sleeves. The Melbourne Essendon game saw quite a few players. But for me, I'm giving it to someone from home. Of course you I'm giving are. it to Lockie Plowman. <laughs> cops, a lot from, cops a lot from supporters and opposition supporters, but came back into the side, helped the Blues win, donned the sleeves, and scored a very, very rare 96, 96 super coach points. So... Congratulations, Lockie Plowman. You were the round 15 Sleeve Watch Award winner. Well done, Lockie. <laughs> well, Sadi, thank you very much for joining me. This was an absolute pleasure, mate. It was – I had so much fun. Yeah, it's been good. I, uh, As I said to you earlier, I was a little bit nervous. Uh, I think I've definitely got a face for podcasts. Uh, <laughs> so it's nice to sort of uh, get on here and, and get the first one out of the way. I'm sure I'll be uh, all the better for the next one. Oh, you're definitely going to be uh, coming off the bench very quickly. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, uh, thank you again. Where can people follow you, Staddy? 
Uh, look, I'm just on Twitter. I'm not a massively uh, active person there, but I'm uh, Matty B underscore 76 on Twitter. And of course, you can catch the cheat sheet every single week on jockreynolds.com.au. The number one traffic driver from Facebook to jockreynolds.com.au <laughs> is the cheat sheet. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Nick. Uh, I'll see you next time. Hopefully, Adelaide can get a win for you this week. I hope so.